Hey guys, welcome back to the series. This is going to be video number five, and we're going to be talking about the pitch section in Harmer. So let's load up a default patch here, and let's look at the pitch section, and that is in the middle of the synth on the left-hand side. You might be more familiar with synths that say octave or semitones to change the pitch. So this is going to be doing it in a ratio. So if we have a tone here, and we want to go up at up one octave, we're going to have to double that frequency, and that's where you want to double this number here. So from one to two. It's going to go up one octave. And then to go up another one, we're going to have to double two, which is going to go to four. And then so on and so forth, four to eight, and eight to sixteen. And then you see the dot zero, 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 zero. These are kind of fine controls here that you can you can change the, the values. And if you look at the top tooltip, it's going to actually tell you exactly what values you're changing. And then if you go to the right, you're going to see that slash, and then that's going to be the division. So that's going to be dropping it down an octave. So from one to two is going to drop one octave, and then two to four, and then from four to eight. And then it's pretty low. Um, I don't know how low I can go, but Harmer can go to nine, which is pretty low. And next up, we have the same kind of thing on the detune section, but that's going to be dealing with the harmonics. So as you can see, the fundamental stays the same while the harmonics get tuned. And it's the same control as the one at the top. And then next up, we see this envelope button here. So let's go up a default patch here and let's right click pitch and let's go to edit articulator. So with this envelope, let's go to a regular envelope. Let's turn this on and make kind of a, an annoying type of thing, very noticeable. Okay, that is pretty annoying. So what this is doing is basically just raising the pitch over time. Now this envelope is telling all your envelope, your pitch envelopes, how much influence they have. As we drag this down, So we get to zero, which is at noon, and it's basically saying no pitch envelopes are going to take effect. Now you also might notice that this, this knob here also goes in the negative, which is doing the opposite, is inverting what your envelope's doing. So it's kind of cool because if you have a synth going or a patch going and you have a lot of different type of pitch effects or envelopes or LFOs or whatever, whatever your envelopes are doing, if you drag this knob a little bit less influenced, then it's going to kind of taper off that pitch. So it's like if you're bending it too much, then probably dial it back with this knob here and it affects them all, which is kind of convenient. Or you can go all the way to the left and see what your pitch moves sound like in reverse, which could lead to a new patch, which is kind of awesome. So let's go to default and let's go to a new patch. And before we move on to more of these things, something easy to, uh, not easy, but worth mentioning is this octave and hertz switch here. That kind of gets overlooked we might say like okay what's that hertz okay and then we go to octave oh what the hell is that and we're like okay we'll go back to hertz and we'll never talk about it again that's usually what happens but the difference here is that in hertz it's our typical saw wave we got our fundamental the octave the fifth so on and so forth of all these harmonics going up here and it's and it's a logarithmic type of ratio in octave they're all evenly spread which isn't very musical I found it's kind of useful for kind of sound effects or sci-fi-ish or weird kind of things. So it's fun to play with, not as musical though. So moving on, we have our vibrato section. And if we keep this depth up here, it's going to kind of do what you expect. It's going to wiggle the pitch. And the depth is how, f how much of that pitch we're wiggling. And you can see it on the top tooltip here as well, how much. So at the top it's 100 cents. At noon, it's 50, and off is to the left. And then there's also the speed. All the way to the left, it's going to give you 125 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. And then on the right, is 250. So moving on, I do default patches all the time because I like doing that. Anyway, so we have our legato section. So let's turn the legato on here in the global section, the middle left side. And when we hold a play note and we play other ones, it's going to bend. Now you might notice that there's this little curve here. These lines, these notes are connected by a curvy line here. And that's what this first box here is going to indicate. And then if you click it, it's going to go straight. I personally like the curve uh, line a little bit better. It seems to me it sounds a little more natural. 
but you might like the straight one, totally up to you. And then below that box, we have these fixed and variable rates. So when it's fixed, it's going from different notes, regardless of their pitch is gonna take the, about the same amount of time. <laughs> But if it's not, when the notes are further spread apart from each other, it's going to take a longer time. So it's going to, it's going to vary the time from one note to the other. So I'm hitting them in relatively even intervals. This note pretty much flat lines to the next one, as expected. But that one I can barely even get to the note and stay on there for a second. And if I change it back to linear, or the fixed time, it's much easier to land on that note in the same amount of time. And the next step, if we, if we turn off legato and turn it back on, we can see that this time knob is related to this legato. So let's take a look at that here. So on the very far left hand side, if we, if we pull this really far down, it's going to take a long time for the notes to change. And if we move it up, it's going to take a lot less time. So on the left hand side, it's going to be measured in time. And then on the right time, you can kind of time it with your, with your uh, BPM where it's like the one, two, three, four, so on, so forth, which is kind of nice. You have the option of doing both. So let's turn, before we turn off our legato, let's take a look at this limit knob. Because if we highlight you know, our mouse over, it says legato pitch limit. So let's turn this up to 300 cents. And let's watch what happens. So right there, when I hit 300 cents, it breaks off and it doesn't want to do the bend anymore. So if we crank this up to, say, 700 cents, so seven semitones. And that's where it's going to break there. So that's what this limit here does. You can go all the way up to uh, 2,400 cents, so two octaves. Quite a lot. So let's go back to a default and let's check out Porta. So as we click this on and off, now the limit knob lights up as well. And as before, these curve lines, the same thing as Legato and this, uh, this fixed variable Portamento Legato thing is the same as, as the Legato. So... The only thing that changed is really this limit knob. The time is the same concept. And if you're wondering what's the main difference is that Porta is going to do the the, uh, the slide, the bend to different notes every time. And you might notice it, it breaks over here. It's because this limit knob here. So if we turn this off... So, but legato is basically you have to have a note held and then you place a consecutive note and that's when it's going to do the uh, the pitch difference. So if we turn Porta back on and then let's alt click these, go back to default. So this limit knob is saying how much, how many cents is this pitch going to be? So if I turn this down to, let's say, 300 cents here. Let's slow it down a little bit. And you're going to start to see these little breaks in these notes. And that's basically saying that it's going to, it's, it's locked. It's limited at 300 cents of pitch range that it's going to bend at. So it'll just cut this off and it'll continue the bend from the next note and into the next one. So if we turn this all the way up, you can see it goes by cents. And then at the top, it says octave wrap. So what that's going to do is it's basically going to do that break right when the octave comes. Right there. How they just break off. And that's what this uh, this limit knob here does. Very fun to play around with a lot of these cool things. And one thing that we should get into is some of the articulation of the pitch because that's really, really where a lot of the magic happens. So let's right click this frequency here and let's go to edit articulator. Kind of like what we did with the envelope. We talked about that where we turn this on and we can make some annoying pitch change with an envelope. This is going to give you a drop down list of all the different stuff you can change the pitch with. So we can use an LFO and change the pitch. We can increase the strength of it with this little note here at the left. Let's zoom out here and see what it's doing. So it's covering a lot of ground. Now we can bring this down to kind of lower that, that influence. And then always at the top left, we can see how much of that pitch is being changed. So this is going up one octave. 
And something worth mentioning uh, is if we turn this all the way up so we can kind of see it, we can always grab this waveform and move it around. We don't have to keep it at the default where it is so we can decide where in the LFO's phase that we want things to be at. And mine's on magnet right now, so it's, it's snapping to these lines. Uh, you can turn that off if you want a little more precision to kind of really hone that in. So if we turn this down a little bit, we have these other four knobs we can play around with. We have the speed. Let's turn the sounds up too much. Kind of sounds like a little siren thing. And then we have the tension, kind of square to, or uh, round it to, to a square. It's a weird thing to say, round it to a square. And then we have the skew. So you can do a lot of laser sounds or stuff like that. So there's kind of little different knobs here to kind of mess around with that waveform there. And then moving on, we have the keyboard mapping. So this graph here is going to tell you all your different notes. So as I play notes, this little vertical line is going to indicate which note I'm playing. So it might be kind of a strange concept, but this graph is telling you, saying, if whatever this note is, I want to play this at a lower pitch. Or higher. So kind of think of it as like a, a manual graph override for your pitch of your keyboard. Hopefully that one makes kind of sense. So, so since I don't want to undo that, I'm just going to go back to a default. And let's right click and edit articulator. And you can always go down to this list and you'll find pitch at the bottom left here. So moving on from keyboard mapping, let's go to velocity mapping. So this is probably what you would imagine. The softer and the harder notes that you play, it's going to play different pitches. So I believe I, st do I still have a pattern in here. I don't. Okay. So let's put in some notes here and let's change all these velocities to different values. And if we change this pitch, So basically now how hard you hit the key is going to control what pitch you're going to hear. And that's based all in this graph. So we can go higher. So the softer you hit the note, the higher in pitch it'll go. Kind of a strange concept, but it's just, there's so many different things you can do in these graphs. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. And next up we have the modulation X, Y, and Z. And if you're not familiar with, these are basically free knobs that you can assign different parameters to, to then modulate them. And they can have multiple different functions, like you can send the pitch to mod X, the frequency cutoff on mod X, the resonance, whatever you really want to. And you can have one mo uh, mod knob, I guess, to uh, control all those parameters. So with this one, this is saying the modulation X mapping. So for a good demonstration of this, if we zoom out all the way, this left point here, if we drag this all the way down and drag this all the way up. So now when we move this X, Y, we can, or this X knob, we can see this vertical line is moving along with it. And now your mod X is basically a pitch shifter. And all these controls are automatable, by the way, with, with the right click and then create automation clip, which is kind of the point of the whole thing. So that's what that one does. Let's restore this back to default here. And then that's the same for modulation of Y and Z. It's just two extra knobs you have options to. Citrus has the X and the Y. It's kind of cool that Harmer has another one, which is Z. Gives a little bit more control. So next you have random mapping. So very similar in Citrus. Let's say I put a middle point here. Let's go to hold. And let's bring this down one octave here. So what this is basically saying is that it's going to give you a 50-50% chance, which I know, yes, is not very random, but that's about the probability that the note is going to be what we originally played, or is it going to be an octave down? So I'll play the same note here. So it's basically going back and forth. Now, if we want to say, I want more probability of playing a lower pitch note, we'll drag this to the left here. Oh, it's an all the way there, 1,200 cents. Ah, there it is. Okay. And every so often, ah, there it is. Every so often, it'll hit the higher note. And so that's back and forth that way as well. So let's go to default. I don't want to reset that whole thing. And then uh, let's go to our pitch again. 
and let's talk about units and index mapping. This is a very cool feature in this graph. So if, since it says unison, let, we have to turn these on. Then one of the next videos is going to be just about unison because there's a lot going on here and we can dive for a while into the unison section, but this is a quick demonstration here. So if we go to in order of two, that means this node here on the left where this vertical graph is, it's kind of hard to see because it's the beginning of it, and then the end. So that's going to say what pitch are these voices going to play. So obviously it's normal. We hear two voices. Let's pan this all the way up so we can hear the difference. Now, if we drag this voice up, this little node here up, let's say, 700 cents, so a fifth. Now we can kind of hear it on the right. Let's go up an octave here. So now we hear the low end, or the low note in our left ear, and then the high end in our right. And that's telling the different voices of what pitch to play. Now it might be confusing because you see like this, so this, this note, why is it not the middle? It's only on the right. Not exactly sure, but if it's on an order of two, it's gonna be this first left node and then the far right one. And then if it's on order of three, now this middle column here is going to take effect. So let's go to 700 here. And then on the top one, we're gonna to go to an octave. So basically kind of a fundamental and fifth and another octave, so kind of get power chord. And then we can kind of bring these back a little bit so it's not so panned out. And then so on, we can go to four, and then you're gonna have one, two, three, and four, but you're gonna to have to readjust your graph here. So 700, and then let's do an octave down here to 1200, or minus 1200, and then this is gonna be, yeah. So the same thing as before, but our, our next voice is going to be the, uh, is going to be the octave below that. And generally, when you're doing pitch, I've heard it's always a good idea to actually not use the hold feature. So let's go to single curve, single curve here, and let's kind of straighten these out. And don't think of this curve as necessarily like doing like a pitch bend or anything. It's really where these nodes are, these points, that really matter. So you have all that thickness there with different pitches, a fifth and a, an octave up and octave down, and that's just four voices, and you're just telling them where, at what pitch are, is each voice gonna play. So let's go to default, let's uh, check out what else is going on here. Then we have the held index mapping. This one's kind of interesting because, uh, let's go to pitch here. Pitch, held index. So if we drag this all the way down for, to really notice it, what this is going to say is that it's always going to start on the left-hand side, whatever this, so it's going to be a low note starting for the first note. And if you keep playing notes and you don't let go, then it's going to keep going up on this ramp. But the second you let go, it's going to st start here at the beginning again. So that's too low here. So I haven't let go yet. I can go all the way up. And if I mess up, ah, I let go. Start all the way at the bottom. Ah, messed up again. I'm almost there. I can't, I messed up, it's my first day. So, default, let's go default again. I hope that one kind of makes sense. And then this last one here, if we go to our pitch and then our mod X speed mapping, and let's drag this down here just a little bit, maybe let's go down one octave here. So this is gonna be, obviously this is mod X, so it's gonna be this knob here, and it's based on the speed that these values change. So let's, if I hit a note here, and I move this knob slowly, it's kind of going through the pitch a little bit, but as soon as I start moving it faster, it's going to have a different effect as how it moves through that graph. Very interesting one. I haven't found too many uses personally for, for this one, but it's good to know if it's there. If you ever want to do a kind of effect like that, then uh, yes, it's there for you. So that's what that does here. Let's go to default. I believe we went through all this here. If there's any questions that you guys have about the uh, the pitch and how to change stuff and articulate it, please let me know if there's anything that's confusing or I sk maybe skipped over too fast. Also let me know and we'll see you in the next one and we're gonna be discussing the unison because there's a lot of uh, cool features and modes and yeah, we'll leave that to the next video. Thanks for watching.